Hello everyone, welcome back to QNAP Live Broadcast. I'm your host and Sam. And today we are going to introduce our newly launched uh, 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 in the near future, we will launch our new 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 version of our QTS 4.4.2. And we invited our PM Sam here today to introduce you something something new about this part. And let's get oh, into the slide first. Well basically uh, there are several things changed and has been approved uh, improved so we will let you know one by one but first we uh, want to show something for our new viewers like if you don't know how to set up your RAID or your storage pool or your volume settings inside of your NAS you can check this video today we will have detailed demonstration one by one and of course we have launched a new JBot storage expansion unit we will also introduce that in today's broadcast so uh, what are the new things in the QTS 4.4.2? Basically, now we have... Sorry. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, basically, our previous uh, password and account, uh, account and password, the default was admin and admin. But according to uh, some security uh, requirements worthwhile, so we have now changed the password from admin into uh, your MAC address of your first internet card. So when you purchase a Kinev NAS, you can download our software, it's called QFinder, which can help you to search the Kinev NAS inside of your internet. And then uh, you can see uh, at the right hand side of the picture, the, the, the red square, the MAC address of the connection you have searched will be the password of your uh, admin account. And then we have enabled the TLS 1.2 and the HTTP compression because we have made it into our default settings now. And then these two are the newly launched expansion unit, TL SATA JBOT and TL USB JBOT. So for now you can use your uh, SATA connection or the USB connection to run, a, run these two parts as an expansion unit with our QNAP NAS, which will give you a more convenient usage when you are trying to uh, store your, your data files. Oh, sorry, for the uh, TLJ bot will be launched after we have, uh, the, we, after we launched the QTS. So uh, uh, for the information I have got, the newly Launched Q QTS 4.4.2 will be at maybe soon, soon maybe uh, in several, next week. yeah, maybe one or two weeks, and then you will also have the information about the TLJ bot on the internet. So the first part is uh, we still want to make a simple explanation to all the new viewers and all the users to the QNAP NAS, and if you have like how to make how to build RAID, how to set your pool and volume then we will give you demonstration. So first is when you are the, when you are the first time trying to use QNAP NAS, what are the, um, like it's not kind of problem, what are the things you, you, you might need to figure? The first is how can I make a uh, sufficient capacity? What if my capacity is not enough? Okay, do I have to buy a new NAS or uh, does QNAP provide any solutions? Or if I'm now using uh, RAID 1 and I want to upgrade that into a, another RAID like RAID 5 or 6, what can I do? And then some of our QNAP NAS we have SSD slots which means you can install that. But under what occasion you can use the SSD to improve your efficient? And then uh, if I have empty storage space or if I don't have enough storage space, how can we configure uh, the, the storage space from your original NAS to another NAS or from another NAS to your original NAS? That are the things we will explain to you. And also the most important thing is uh, since we have launched the new TLJ bot, how can you use the external JBot? on your QNAP NAS. These are the six things we will let you know one by one. And the first is when you face a insufficient capacity on your current NAS, what can you do? Well, you have two ways to make it uh, bigger. So 
So the most economic solution is uh, you can use the online rate expansion functions, mm -hmm. but it only supports the rate five and rate six, and then you have to uh, have the free slot of your NAS. Mm -hmm. If that, uh, you can just prepare one disk and plug it into the free slot of your NAS, then you can quickly to do the online rate expansion. Mm -hmm. And another solution is uh, you can use uh, replace disk one by one. Mm. So uh, it's suit for uh, all rate, mo the most rate type, rate one, rate five, rate six, rate one zero. And then you can use it to expand your uh, rate capacities. Also, you can migrate to a new NAS for more slot. We will introduce this in next patch mm -hmm. or use our TLZ by external device and we will introduce this part uh, in the final chapter. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's do a live demo to tell you how to do it. Okay. First, uh, oh, I use your F73 yes. to do the live demo. Okay, then we go to storage and snake shop, check my storage pool. You can see the disk one, disk two is a, a two terabyte hard drive. Then I click the replace disk one by one. And this, we can select this one and click the change, change button. Very easy. Just remove the disk. Uh, insert, install, insert a new disk with a high capacity. I insert a uh, four terabyte mm -hmm. disk. So now you can see a new disk on the screen, and it start to rebuilding the RAID. Also, we change the setting to receive first. Because now it's a live broadcast, so mm -hmm. we just pre record and speed up the yes. <laughs> press speed. And yeah. when you finish, uh, you just click the disk too and uh, also click the change button. Mm -hmm. Just remove the disk too. Okay, then you can see our UI interface the SSD is changed from WD to Seagate mm -hmm. and the new Seagate disk is start to rebuilding now After rebuilding finished, uh, you can just expand the capacity of this red group. And it needs to synchronize the size again. And when, it, when it's done, uh, you can see the, the capacity is increased from 1.8 terabyte to 6 terabyte. Okay, so uh, shall we start the next demonstration? Yes. And this we we to do the online rate expansion. Okay. 
you see here, I, my 472ST have two, uh, disk one to disk three is my red group, mm -hmm. and the disk four is a free disk. I just go to the storage destination shop and click the storage pool to enter the storage pool one measurement. Click the expand pool and choose the option to add a new disk to uh, existing uh, red group. And choose my free disk. see the new capacity will increase to 2.7 2 terabyte. And you can see the red group is at a uh, disk 4 into this red group now. And the status is changed to migrating. You can mm -hmm. see the new capacity is increased. Okay. Let's go back. Yeah. So this is how you can uh, replace your disk one by one, or uh, you can expand, expand your RAID. Yeah. Okay. So uh, after finish this part, we go into the second part. And if you uh, need, if you need to know how to configure your storage, and or maybe when you are uh, when you want to change another NAS and you have your original uh, volumes inside of your original NAS, you want to make it into the new one. How can you do? Then uh, this is how you can migrate your existing NAS, uh, disk into another NAS. Yeah, it's very easy. Just ensure your two NAS have the same firmware version, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the newer the better. Yes, yeah. and. Just shut down the both NAS and plug the original disk to mm -hmm. a new NAS. Mm -hmm. and just power on. You on, only need to do is reconfigure some like a host name or yes. the, your network setting. Mm -hmm. and it's finished. Or if your uh, disk is not a system disk, it's a data pool. Mm -hmm. It's more easy. Just we call it the data pool migration. Mm -hmm. You just go to the storage and shop to do the safely detach mm -hmm. and remove the data disk to the uh, free, free start of the new NAS okay. and just attach and recover it. Then it's finished. Okay. Uh, let's go to, to do the live demo to show how to do it. Sure. Okay, this is my original NAS is a 4731P2. And you can see I have a three disk as a RAID 5 to my storage pool. Mm -hmm. It's also my system bar. Total capacity is one, uh, almost uh, two terabyte, and the uh, volume size capacity is uh, around one terabyte. Yes. Go to the fire station. So we, you can see here is my user data same inside, and uh, what's the application I installed from APB Center. Mm -hmm. Just uh, shut down. Okay, remove the slot from my four seventy four 
Master D1 P2 Master My School disk into my new NAS for 72p uh, ST and just power up and you can use QFinder to search the online NAS you can see uh, 731p2 is online mm -hmm. but the NAS model is changed mm -hmm. from 31p2 to 72ST And here you can use the original credential to log in your NAS because it's the same system. So all the data are same as uh, the original one. check all the app now it's on the same and it's starting now so here you just need to reconfigure some configuration like mm -hmm. uh, the server name the host name you need to use change it to 72 st to reconfigure your network setting because may, uh, like 72D has a with uh, 10 port is a net port so that means uh, you may need to reconfigure jumbo frame mm -hmm. and IP address If your original network setting has a uh, virtual switch, mm -hmm. here you also need to reconfigure it. So it's a live demo for the system migration. Okay, so the next part is the so pool migration, right? Yes. Pro migration is much easier. Now here uh, I have four disk, and uh, disk three and disk four are my uh, data pool. It's to one terabyte hard drive. It's a ray one. Uh, you can see our file stations. Uh, here have some data. I saw image, uh, my document, and my slide for presentation. So just click the uh, action and do the safely detached pool. Status of the disk three and disk four are changed to separately detached. And just remove these two disk. And plug these two disk into the new NAS.
see it's detect uh, disk three and disk four with uh, uh, a type is uh, free disk. Just click the recover button. Uh, choose the uh, attach uh, and recover the storage pool. Finished it in five minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, we check the setting here. The stop which pool are all the same as the old NAS. And check the file station. Also, you can see the same file here. Live demo for the uh, system migration and the pool migrations. Yes, and for the next part is when you are trying to uh, when you build your RAID already, and then you want to uh, migrate your your RAID type. Like uh, for now, I have two disks and I am using the RAID one. But after after a long time that I use my NAS and I want to turn my RAID one into my RAID five or RAID six, what can I do? Yeah. Uh, it's very easy. Uh, we also you just plug in a uh, new disk into your NAS mm -hmm. and uh, go to the uh, storage and snapshot mm -hmm. pool measurement, select your RAID, and do the click the migration button. Mm -hmm. Then you just follow the wizard to select a new disk for the migration. Mm -hmm. Here, uh, I should mention uh, our uh, RAID migration only support migrating in this order just from single mm -hmm. to the partition type uh, RAID 1 and if you want to uh, expansion your capacity you can migrate your RAID from RAID 1 to RAID 5 or you want to migrate your RAID uh, uh, due to the reliability concern and you can uh, migrate your RAID 5 to RAID 6 to add one more parity disk but you must follow this order we can only make it from the smaller range to the higher range. Yes. We cannot go backward, right? Yeah. Okay. So then uh, this is an another demonstration for how to migrate the range. Yeah. Okay. Here uh, I also used the uh, uh, 73 NAS. Uh, this one, this two is my system, and uh, disk three to disk six is my storage pool too. Mm -hmm. I configured it as a RAID 5 and total capacity is uh, 5.4 terabytes here. And usually for commercial or business usage, uh, you, might, you think you want to uh, add one RAID type to RAID 6 mm -hmm. or RAID 5 to RAID 6 for reliability concerned. So here you can check the system here. The original data volume 2 is uh, my VM and the data volume 3 I store some uh, picture and my spec. And here just go to the uh, storage pool management. Oh sorry. I should ins insert the plug in the new disk now. I should prepare a new disk and insert it. And you can see system detect disk seven. Management. Mm -hmm. uh, click the manager button and choose the uh, migrate rate group. So you can see the free disk on the list and uh, the mic red migrate can only 
me from Ray 5 to Ray 6. Because only add one parity disk, so the capacity will be the same. See your disks have already added into this red group. Mm -hmm. The red type changed from red 5 to red 6. Okay, so it's a live demo of the uh, red migrations. Okay. So after we check how to migrate the RAID, the next part is when uh, well, previously we mentioned some of our Kinet NAS, we support the SSD slot. So we want mm -hmm. to show you how to configure the SSD. We, you can use it as SSD cache or you can use our exclusive uh, QTR function. But before that, we want to let you know the trend of the SSD. Yeah, so you can see the SSD has become more mm -hmm. and more popular in past few years yes. on the market and the capacity increased and the price is decreased mm -hmm. it's a trend and uh, compared with the traditional hard disk SSD not only accelerate the uh, sequential file access it, it but, but also provide an amazing random performance for yes. ILPS yes and then another thing is you can use the SSD not only to set it as a cache, you can also use it with our exclusive Q-tier function. The Q-tier function is that our QNAP NAS will help to detect automatically what kind of the what kind of the data file you have been used most often, and it will give uh, we will shift that into your SSD as hot data. And for some data file you just uh, seldomly use it or you never use it they will go to warm data or the cold data and the cold data will be saved into your hard drives because the random and the sequential read write of the SSD is so much faster than the traditional hard drives so we will automatically uh, shift your hard data into the SSD so it will give you a better performance when no matter you, are, you, you try to read or try to write the data and uh, it can give you a better efficient and it will ad automatically detect after a period of time that you've been using your NAS for another hot data it will go up to the SSD and for the cold data and warm data will go down to the hard drives so uh, uh, we actually we had this function uh, it's not a new thing on QTS442 but in the previous version of the QTS some of the users they will ask and when they try to configure a SSD cache or a QTR, they don't understand how to make it back or to switch to another uh, function of the SSD usage. So uh, today we will also let you know how can you switch uh, from QTR into SSD or the vice versa. So this is what we will show you today. But before we show you all the demonstration we just want to give you this column that we uh, we, we we got from the feedback of our customers that uh, you, you just want to have a, a chart or a sample example for you to know that when you're doing the file server or you're doing you, you want to edit your uh, media file or you are running an enterprise so you want to have an enterprise base setting what can you use is, uh, are, is it more suitable for you to use QTR or the SSD? So uh, Sam will give you a detailed explanation. Here we collect some customer information and uh, also we visit some important customer reports, production company, the TV station, and some uh, business partner to, mm -hmm. get, to do the data analysis. And here is a table, what we recommend customer to configure the storage. SSD storage mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and for files server and uh, web server or virtualization storage servers we will recommend to use a Q tier mm -hmm. but if you use for editing storage for video editing to do the film cut raw material cutting mm -hmm. then we will suggest you use uh, not don't use a Q tier or catch you mm -hmm. just use SSD right static volume as well as five but if you are to do the post, uh, normal editing like mm -hmm. uh, post production and add a subtitle and a sound, uh, 
do some animations, uh, we will suggest you to use uh, SAD rewrite cache as mm -hmm. rate file. Mm -hmm. Of course, for uh, enterprise labels, uh, like you use a log server or backup servers, we recommend you to use uh, SAD write only cache. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But actually, even here is what we recommend, but uh, SAD have a lot of different type like mm -hmm. uh, uh, TLC, MLC for enterprise usage, mm -hmm. or for consumer type is a TLC, QLC type. And different type will affect the workflow. So even the best SAD configuration uh, is just by uh, measurable on this config, but not suitable for every all of the, your uh, environment. Mm -hmm. So we will highly recommend you can free switch both between the SS cage and the QT to adopt your environment. Yes. So the next part, we will show you how to reconfigure uh, between your SSC cache and your QT. Okay. And this is my 6085. Storage pool one is my hard drive. It's a red one. Mm -hmm. Let's configure the SAT cache first. I just load for SSD disk one is three five seven. And I can type is a rewrite cache as a red one zero. Here cache more you should according to your environment you want to do the small file mm -hmm. copy or do the um, big data uh, or the media streaming so mm -hmm. you can cho choose according to your type complete it create the qt service first and here uh, the, all the data in your SSD will uh, move to your hard drive mm -hmm. automatically uh, after that you can remove this SSD cache storage pool is uh, have a new red group SSD Okay, when you 
big town, you can see the total capacity is increased from 1.8 terabyte to 2.2. That means all the SAT capacity you can use it. Okay. If you your type choosing a QT. Also, you can define the algorithm you want to mm -hmm. do the uh, tiering automatically or by my, by our algorithm or by schedule. So you can define the tiering on demand, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, folder is important you want to use uh, SSDQ tier and the sum of not uh, folder you just store the, uh, save the uh, code data, mm -hmm. you don't need to turn it on. or SSD red, you just click uh, remove button and uh, remove the uh, ultra speed theory here. Click uh, yes. confirm again. And the system will remove all the data in the SSD yes. to your hard drive. Well, reconfigure between SD cache and QT. Yeah, so now we know how to switch them. But uh, the next part is, well, a lot of our uh, QNAP NAS user, when it is the first time for you to configure your storage pool, you might have this kind of questions like, what, uh, we, we can check the upper side of this, the, the, the charts. What is thick volume? What is thin volume? And what is static volume? You, 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 you might get a bit confused when, when, when it is the first time you set. So we just want you to know the difference and uh, the most suitable usage for you to, to set all of this. Yeah, uh, you can see this is our structure of storage. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of hard drive and you configure it and combine it all together and create a red group. Mm -hmm. and after that, uh, you can see the storage pool layer and the also can see the uh, static value here. Static value is uh, uh, the basic uh, this infrastructure mm -hmm. for the storage. Mm -hmm. uh, it can provide the highest performance, but unfortunately it, uh, it's with, uh, it cannot use our, some of our advanced uh, feature like uh, Snapshot. Mm -hmm. So usually uh, I have some customers still use like to use a static value. Mm -hmm. like a video editing mm -hmm. into the uh, uh, film cut mm -hmm. and then they just need the highest performance to share in their footage yes and after uh, their, their job they just they have to remove all the data their result to back up to another disk another drive mm -hmm. to the cloud because uh, this static volume they cannot protect the data yeah, and the, for most customer, we will recommend to use the sync wallet or the uh, sync wallet. Uh, the difference is uh, the sync wallet is can guarantee the space. But only the weakness is mm -hmm. uh, with too much space. And the sync wallet is better because uh, it can dynamically distribute the space. But the problem is if someone, somebody mm -hmm. uh, save too much data and uh, not control the, the usage, mm -hmm. then it may be stop interrupt your inter important service. Yeah. Yeah. But don't worry, uh, just if you measure your storage, you also provide the resize function. So you can easily uh, reallocate your storage space, like uh, adjust the sync button to smaller mm -hmm. and uh, free less space to other storage pool, mm -hmm. other volume, other mm -hmm. lab. Or also you can reduce the planning sync volume mm -hmm. uh, to avoid the risk of over uh, subscription. Yes. 
do it. Yeah. And next is uh, we introduce the long sitting. Long is uh, configuration for your low latency set environment. It's also easy. You just go to the storage and snapshot mm -hmm. and click the create button and choose the new block based long. And here you just check two important configuration. One is your long capacity. Another one is your sector size. Here default we default on uh, 512 byte is mm -hmm. suit for for most environments like your VMware your Linux server. But if your LAN is provided to your Windows server or Windows PC, mm -hmm. then we will recommend change adjust it to the four k four kilobyte. Yeah. Okay, it will provide a higher performance. Then just create the iSCSI target, then you can easily share your long storage. Of course. Then uh, uh, we still have this page because we, we, no matter you are a new user or you have been a Kinect NAS user for a long time, uh, for the new users, please check on this page. We have a snapshot function, which based on different of our NAS, you can have like 256 up to 1024 snapshots and that is to provide you a, protect, uh, a protection when you are facing a malware or a hack issue or you just accidentally someone delete your file from your NAS and the snapshot can always give you the best protection to recover all of your data files back to the time that you take the snapshot from your NAS it's like a picture yeah so you can just easily check on any of the snapshots and then get the, your file back or you can just recover all the file into your NAS or maybe uh, you can recover into an, from another uh, snapshot vault and back to this NAS or another NAS okay and next we talk about the global setting of our uh, storage and snapshot and com Config listing can ensure the storage performance and mm -hmm. healthy. Uh, first is a rarely single priority. Here I will recommend you set it as a high speed mm -hmm. to protect your RAID. Yeah. And the next one is a RAID scrubbing schedule. It can scan and repair your file sector of your RAID group, RAID group automatically. Mm -hmm. If you use a RAID 5 and RAID 6, well, I will highly recommend to enable it and do it uh, on your free time like a uh, weekend okay. to do it. And auto reclaim is usually for the, you have a SSD pool, SSD RAID or a SIM wallet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it can return the of your space uh, at the 2 o'clock. And next one, next setting is a uh, check file system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here, um, if you enable it, uh, system will check the unclick file system in the wallet, but it may stop your service. Uh, so I will highly recommend don't Im disable it. And uh, if you want to do the check file system, do it manually. Sure. And next global setting is for this kind of device, uh, like a pre predictive uh, smart migration. Mm -hmm. So if the uh, NAS detect uh, your disk has a smart error, uh, it will auto migrate the data to the spare disk. So that means you should prepare the spare disk first. Yeah, of course. And the second setting is uh, disk temperature around. Here, uh, you can enable this disable it by your wish but i will recommend if you use a uh, to ssd uh, the temperature is very high so mm -hmm. you have to turn it on if you use a uh, to ssd okay. and also raise the uh, temperature threshold to avoid the false alarm mm -hmm. and another two setting is a uh, check uh, expansion you need from way update at the login of course mm -hmm. we recommend to enable it and the, la the latest one is uh, share my disk analysis data with QNAP. Mm -hmm. Here I have to mention again, uh, 
a few neighbors will comply with the GDPR requirements. Yes. So that means we will not collect any private information. So only collect your disk information to do the analysis and uh, optimization for your next firmware version. Okay. So if you are a QNAP user, I, please help us. And the third config global configuration is about the snake uh, The first one is a snake space management option, like uh, to do the recycle latest snake shop and the recycle uh, preliminary snake shop. Here, we, if you um, running the service, not running your NAS as a service, I will recommend you to enable all of this part to avoid the interruption story. And also we have uh, some setting mm -hmm. like uh, enable Windows previous versions. So that means if you use a uh, monthly store folder on your window as a uh, uh, network drive, mm -hmm. you can just right click uh, your share folder and click the uh, uh, click is to check the uh, latest version, snapshot version. Uh, Okay. Well, after we after we talk about how to uh, how to configure in your global settings, well, the last part is we want to show you how to configure and how to use our new TLJ bot since it has a SATA type and a USB type. Yeah. So uh, basically, for the SATA, uh, basically they just provide the different connection, but they have the same function that you can use. So at the left hand side, you can take your TLJ bot as your NAS expansion. So you just connect to your NAS, then you can just put it right there as another ex uh, as another storage pool, yeah. right? Or if you if you just want it to be another uh, external drive enclosure with your uh, laptop or with other of your devices, you can also choose this. This the TLD A hundred C that can provide you a USB connection. So it is also very easy for you to use. You can even you know copy something into your expansion and then grab your expansion to another place and then to copy everything back to another destination. That is one of the uses that you can use. Okay. Yeah. If you want to use it to the uh, high speed external drive enclosures. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can just uh, plug your TLJ bar to your NAS. Then mm -hmm. I, I know some of our customers, they want to store their important data, their, uh, for their photos, uh, their uh, wedding movies, uh, mm -hmm. their some important data. Mm -hmm. They will store it in their uh, drag cabinet. Mm -hmm. And no matter the file type is a uh, uh, lit, it is EST4 mm -hmm. or the Windows NTFS or the uh, Max HFS Plus or you store some your mm -hmm. camera data, mm -hmm. your photo and then your video. Uh, usually you will format your uh, memory card as a ES yes. yes. flat type. Then you just uh, purchase the license or ES flat driver from our software store. It's only cost for US dollars, then you can directly access the data. Yes. Later we will do the live demo to do, show you how to do it. Mm -hmm. But the most important feature for Zeba is to be your expansion solutions. Uh, you can find uh, like all the red expansion masks we described above uh, will take a long time. Mm -hmm. Many at least a few hours and may, some of your according to your capacity may need to take a few days to mm -hmm. week mm -hmm. yeah to do it but um, and when you do it you, that means you have to interrupt the NAS service for your data security so it's a long downtime for your NAS but if you choose to use our external Zeba, mm -hmm. they can easily solve your problem of, of your uh, slot, uh, insufficient slot and the storage space. 
but only you need to remember uh, you have to configure the whole new storage pool for mm. your zbar and when you configure the zbar the storage pool that means all of the disk in your zbar they will be erased for internal usage yes And also have another advantage to use our uh, ZBAR is uh, we name it the uh, ZBAR migration. That means you can easily migrate the whole pool data from NAS A to another NAS. And it's very easy. You can see uh, just four step. First, check you uh, if you have a iSCSI service, mm -hmm. you should stop it on mapping it. Then do the separate departure shut down the zbar then connect to another nas yes. and start it up then our nas will detect automatically and confirm that do you want to attach it and recover your storage pool yes so let's do the live demo yes but first we will show you how uh, we will show you a usb camera that you can yeah. check on how you just easily insert or unplug and plug your 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 yeah. your drives so here is our uh, uh, tld 800c mm -hmm. connected mm -hmm. with my x472st uh, st mm -hmm. and here i have one hard drive and uh, one usb there. ssd this plug it Yes. Okay. Let's go to my desktop. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is it my seventy two? It's my tier the eight hundred C. Okay, you can see it's detect two disk. One is my hard drive with uh, one almost a two terabyte. Mm -hmm. and another one is my SSD. And you can go to the external storage to check. You detect two device, uh, disk four and disk six. Just go to the fire station. You can directly access my hard drive. You can see this one has uh, my logo, some video, and some pictures. Okay, and another drive is my hard drive. Oh, you can see uh, the movie which on a it's a drama TV show for which I store in my hard drive. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's the live demo for the, our TLD800 seat as our uh, external drive enclosure. Yes, so let's go back to the slide. Yeah, next we let do the live demo to do the uh, TLZ bar migration. Yes. Okay, now I connect my TLD 800C to my 431P. And in my TLZ bar, I have four disks. Create a storage pool. Here I create two volume, one single volume, one single volume, and one long. The long is mapping to my Windows Server.
So if I want to do the Ziba migration, well, let, uh, let's check the data inside. Uh, data value to have some VM data. And value three has some photo. And my is back. So first, I launch the iSCSI and Fiber channel. I should uh, disable and deactivate my iSCSI service first. change the long mapping to the unmapped status. step is very easy. Just select our uh, TLD 800C and click action button to do the safely detach here. Also you can go to the right upper corner and do the safely detach here. Well, I will recommend to detach the Z bar from storage and snatch because you can do the sound check first. Unplug the USB cable and plug it into my new NAS 72ST and just power on the Zebra. You can see the Zebra is detached and they want to. Sure, we want to attach it automatically or not. As I click OK, so here you can see the TLJ bar is already mounted and all the disk status is same as before. So two bar data volume and the one long. The capacity and configuration are all the same. Then we check the uh, file station. You can see all the data are same as before. Before you remove it. Yeah. Well, 
we have a lot of demos today because we just want to give you the most detailed information of how you can configure your NAS with our new QTS 442. So uh, basically the 442 version of the QTS will be launched recently uh, in the near future and then <coughs> you can also check on the TLJBAT on the internet or your domestic uh, online, web online shop. So uh, if you want to know more about our uh, product information, please go to qnap.com and then if you want to see more of our the, the videos or the demos of the day, you can use QTS 4.4.2 as a keyword to search on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. so uh, if you have any, uh, if you want to know more about anything, you can leave a message below, we, can, we will re reply ASAP. And this will be all of our introduction today. We will see you next time on QNAP Live Broadcast. Bye. Thank you.